Strive and thrive, baby. Like, that's all you can do, you know? Or else you can run, I guess. And just become a worse person. But I'm not trying to do that. The whole purpose of my life, I think, is to just become the highest, best version of myself, so. Country Roads with Virginia. I've never been to West Virginia. This stuff sucks. It's B12, but it tastes like, it kind of tastes like fish oil. It kind of tastes like fish oil. This stuff sucks. It's B12, but it tastes like, it kind of tastes like fish oil. It kind of tastes like fish oil. That's rough. Oh, that's real rough. Mm. It's a B12. Well, it's like a complex of B vitamins. B1, B12, B3, B6, B2, B7, B5. Because um, a lot of vegetarians are deficient in B, like B12. So it helps with energy, etc. Highly recommend if you're a vego. I've never had the strawberry and festivals. I've only had the grape ones. And I'm taking skull cap, which is helpful for calming your nerves, apparently, so anxiety. Um, this is a healthy dosage, so it's a little big for me. One just kind of tastes like um oh i love this one kind of, that one kind of just tastes like flowers mm, i love an uncrustable as well like when the peanut butter is still like hard because it's frozen no i'm not looking in the van i think i'm not sure if dempsey sold the van or she took off with it and is living in it, in it by herself. I have no idea, but um, she left me in a different country uh, and took off and basically told me, if you want the van, come and get it, but good luck finding me, peace. Um, <clears throat> and I don't have a thousand dollars to just throw away on an egg. Uh, Easter egg hunt to go find the van, so. I actually grew to like uh, living in the van. The only like downside, honestly, was that Dempsey was there. <laughs> um, because as much as people like to say that I'm a negative Nancy and all of that, she was the biggest negative, she's the most negative person I've potentially have ever lived with slash met. Um, I would like turn music on and try to dance and she would just, and like she would never go and leave. She would never like, I was, cause I was working 10 hours a day. So I'd be like, go on an adventure, go do stuff. Like, please get out of the van. Honestly, cause I needed my space. And like, I'm a big space person. I need my space. Like I need to recharge. I need my space. And she would never leave. She would just sit there on her iPad, which I bought her. And, uh, just not do anything. She wouldn't attempt to make money. I tried to, you know, buy her classes so she could make money on online. And she would get super into it for a second and then she'd just be like, eh. And she would just ditch it, the idea. Tried to buy her ESL certification. She got through like one day of that. Um, her thing, yeah, it just, you know, I'm blocking anyone who says Team Dempsey. You can go on her account and listen to her lives. Oh wait, I don't think she goes live because that would mean she has to act and she's not a very good actor, let's be honest. 
Yeah, please. No, ask her for details on her side. We're all dying to know. I'm dying to hear her side, please. I'm... This is the thing, she won't ever tell her side because she knows she can't. Otherwise, she's gonna have to lie, and she's, she's really not a good liar, believe it or not, so... Um, legit online job I'd recommend. If you can get your, like, ES... I think it's ESL certification, like teaching uh, English online or being an e English tutor online. That one seemed pretty good. Oh, I'm not allowed to talk about this stuff, honey. I don't care about my India. <laughs> I'm one of those who cares more about my peace and mental health than a little piece of paper. a lot of people today. Thank you guys for telling us who you are. I don't want you in my energy field, so that's awesome. Mmm, I love these, these mean comments are just fantastic. They're, so what like people are doing is they're giving me their energy, good or bad, it doesn't matter. You're still giving me your energy and I am thriving off of it, baby. I'm taking all of that energy and putting it in a bank and I'm using it. I'm using it for this podcast. I'm using it to succeed in life. I'm using it at the gym. I'm thinking of all of these horrible comments at the gym. I'm using them. They're all going to, they're just, it's energy, babe. You're giving me your energy and I appreciate it so much. Like, I don't even care. But I don't listen to these mean comments like I just block you. Even though you're giving me your energy. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you always like my new uh, tattoo? Let's see if I can show you. I'm debating on if I should like cut my hair. I might like do the like little lesbian mullet look and cut it like real short. Just for shits and giggles. <laughs> it's like, what is the physical body? It's just like a little thing we haul around. I just want to make it fun. Yeah, it's just interesting. Everyone looks great with a mullet. <laughs> so I had short hair twice in my life, but I didn't know how to style it and I didn't even know I had curls. So I never got the opportunity to like make it like curly and like cute. It always just looked like a poof, you know what I mean? So, exactly, hair grows back. <laughs> it's not uh, that deep. And I'm lucky enough that I have the choice to cut off my hair. Some people don't really have that choice. They lose their hair. So that is a privilege um, that I'm grateful to even have the choice for that, so. I don't know any of these songs. Even though they're on my playlist. Oh, The Very Thought of You. I should know this one. <clears throat> Thank you. I appreciate that. Lost it. Lost trauma is stored in the hair. Interesting. Huh. I wonder. I know it's stored like in my muscles for sure. Like I'm always constantly tense. Ugh, Charlotte, that would be amazing. I've even had like British people over there um, say like, hey, just give us an address and like we'll go pick them up. And I've told her that. I've been like, hey, like, people can pick them up, like, give us an address. She just deletes the comments, like, she just, she's, um, unfortunately acting very child-like and immature about it, um, because she knows how much they mean to me. Thank you, yeah, man, the boat episode was pretty, uh, pretty hard to watch back, not gonna lie. Pretty difficult to relive. And, um, you know, I went on the ferry a couple of times after that, but I definitely preferred the Euro tunnel. The tunnel, it's faster, it's like, I think it's like 30 minutes instead of 90 minutes. 
So even though it costs more, I was always willing to pay more to do the Euro Tunnel, but sometimes she just insisted on the ferry. And so for those moments, I would just do my thing. I would take like two nausea pills and then just go stand on the, like the bow of the ship and just stare out. And uh, that worked out pretty decently for me. As long as she stayed away. <laughs> Do you feel you were misrepresented on the show? So season one was all fake. I mean, the storyline was all fake. Um, so was I mis misrepresented? No, I was acting, I was playing a part um, because we didn't really have any drama. And the drama that we did have, uh, the producer didn't think was an interesting enough storyline, so they made their own. Um, second season, I mean, that stuff's pretty accurate. There's just so much stuff that they left out though. There's so many scenes that they left out. Like so many scenes. Um, scenes of like Dempsey having a full breakdown. Really upset that they've left that out, but it's like they're trying so hard to make me the bad person. Um, or the person who sucks, like, I don't know. They're try they just try so hard to like make her the angel. Um, Did you really get sick at the beginning of season one? I was really sick at the beginning of season one, but I was basically in a hotel room getting sick for those two days. Uh, and the none of the camera crew came in the room ever that whole time. So they had me act out the getting sick uh, the next day when I was already better. They had me go to urgent care again, even though I'd been the day before. Um, it was, that was all acted out. They had me, like I put, um, a cup of water and I put that down the toilet to make a sound like I was having the runs um, so like all of that was all of the scenes you saw there were acted out but it did happen I did have a, a parasite um, I did had to take a stool sample to urgent care they were I, I was I was up but I was alone for all of that and that I was I remember like crying and I almost said I'm not gonna do the show because <clears throat> they were keeping me away from Dempsey because they were, they were wanting to just take her to the farm by herself and shoot scenes by herself. And they weren't like helping me in any way. Like they just like kind of left me while I was like, I felt like I was dying. So I was like sick in this country, like it was a mess. It was a mess. So I like, I remember talking to the like head producer of Before the 90 Days at like two in the morning and I was just crying to her and I was like, I'm not doing this. And she had to talk me into staying, which was really just, there's so many people here and they've all left their families and they all need this money. So if you stop doing this right now, you know, they're all relying on you. So it was more, manipulation than anything, which is a common thing that the producers use. All these people are relying on you. Do you see how many crew members there are? You want me to tell them to go home and not get paid? Like, damn, that's a lot of people relying on me and I actually like these people, that sucks. I haven't watched, I don't watch uh, any of the 90 Day stuff anymore. It's too, this used to be like my, my favorite show, man. Uh, now that I know all the behind the scenes stuff, it is not even close to my favorite show. I can't even really watch reality TV anymore. Um, but like, especially not this show. And on, honestly, this show is also just kind of down for the dumps. They have the same freaking eight cast members on rotation. Uh, it's just not really anything. They can't sue me. 90 Day will not sue me because they know that there are so many cast members who would sue them um, for all of the violations that they have done. Um, they would pay below minimum wage a lot of time. They have kept cast members from seeking medical attention, life-saving medical attention. There have been physical fights, verbal abuse, I mean, all of this stuff, and it's all in 
you know, camera that they have, like, it's all there. So if anyone were to sue them and they had to come forward with the footage, it wouldn't be good for them. And that is why they don't sue people like us. Um, no, I will not be at the reunion. <clears throat> the reunion has already been filmed. It's being probably edited right now. I was not invited. I will not be there. Neither will Dempsey, though, to be fair. Um, so at least that's good. But yeah, no, I'm not going to be at the tell-all, but I have started this podcast, which is the, the real tell-all. Diana Crawl. Shadow body, dee 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 dee, da 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 da, ba da ba da ba ba, yeah yeah yeah. The podcast is not out yet. It's gonna be coming out soon though. Well, actually, there has not been a podcast uh, done like this before. The closest thing is like Nick Vile, but he doesn't just do reality TV people. And he does, uh, he doesn't actually talk about the behind the scenes stuff for reality TV. This will be the only podcast that talks to reality TV cast members about the behind the scenes stuff. Um, it's from people who either don't care about their NDA or their NDA has passed, so they are willing to spill every bit of the tea. They talk about the stuff that the producers did, said, uh, the drama with, like, the, you know, behind-the-scenes stuff, what really happened. Uh, so, no, there actually isn't a podcast that is like this before. The, the only 90-day podcasts that exist um, are all not done by cast members. They're just done by random people. Um, so yeah, this is the first one, thank you. And no, I will not just be doing 90 Day People. We have people from Love is Blind, Queer Ultimatum, I Kissed a Girl, uh, Milf Manor, Big Brother UK, etc. So. But the third episode is being edited as we speak. It's not just audio, it's also visual, so you get to see people, their reactions, people talking, stuff like that. Shatler is such an uncreative name, <laughs> like it really is just not that creative. Um, it's just not, I don't know. It's pretty blase in the overall picture of things. What are we thinking for the next color? I have these choices. First one to say color wins. Anyone? Anyone? Pink, I think, was the first one. Let's see, what was it? Yes, pink. Thank you, Susan. Um, am I going to have Corona on it? I think Corona is waiting until her NDA is expired. There are a lot of cast members who still uh, are respecting their NDA, which I respect completely. Um, I have chosen not to. <laughs> um, so yeah, only talking to people who don't care about their NDA or, uh, their NDA has expired. No, mine is not expired. However, I will not be using the name of the show on the podcast. That is something that I am taking. I will not be using the name of the show. So you're just gonna know. I'll describe it, but I'm not gonna name it. There's some people who are just very interesting people with the comments they make. Be a good girl now. Eat shit. <laughs> Weirdos. Maybe. I'm impractical. Do 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 do. Responsible. 
Hello. I'm not a good girl. Not even close. I used to be. I used to be a walking doormat. Not no mole. No more Miss Nice Girl, as Matilda would say. This really makes you just want to like high kick. I grew up uh, watching like Gene Kelly, Audrey Hepburn type movies, Fred Astaire. And uh, my Nana, who kind of raised me, uh, we would be in the living room and she would say, okay, get up. And she would start teaching me to dance with her and we would dance in her living room. And that's one of my favorite memories. But she got me into, yeah, exactly, Turner Classic Movies type stuff because that's all we would watch and all we would listen to. So I'm like, it's, it's my favorite. I mean, this is real. This is back when people, they didn't just act, they could sing, they could dance. Like, this is real talent. Uh, actors nowadays really can't do that. Not, I mean, not, like, Gene Kelly, bro, like, the, the dude could tap dance his way into, like, your heart, man, like, oh, that was good stuff. That, that was back when things were good and, like, the sets were all put together and, like, painted by hand, like, that was, mmm. I'm a big movie fan, That those are, those are my favorite. The closest I can get is Bollywood, and I, I adore Bollywood stuff, so I still watch a lot of Bollywood. Because it's the closest you can get to it. Yeah, Susan, I'm sorry to hear that your granddaughter has anxiety. It's, it's a tough thing, it really is. I think a lot of people don't understand how tough it can be, but it can. Um, for the longest time, you know, it kept me, I didn't leave my apartment. Uh, literally leading up to doing the show, I hadn't left my apartment. You know, I left my apartment on and off to go get groceries and stuff, but for three solid years, I didn't really leave my apartment. Um, you know, there were random days when my friends would drag me out, but those days were very, very rare and very far in between. Um, it's debilitating. People, people don't get that. There's no real reason for it. You can't logically be like, well, I don't want to go outside because I'm scared that lions will attack me. It's just like, I, I just am overwhelmingly fearful. I would like walk into a grocery store and I'd have like 10 minutes to grab whatever I could before the anxiety would be so much that I would just have to drop everything and just leave like really tough. Which is why I wouldn't get the cold things until the very last, because I didn't, in case I had to drop them, I wouldn't want them to... Yeah. Oof, that's rough, spooky misfit. That's really rough. No, I'm not back in uh, Irving. I never really lived in Irving. I lived in Irving for like... S I don't even know, four months total? Four months, maybe, yeah. Maybe six months. I didn't live in Irving that long. I lived in Dallas uh, the longest. I lived in Dallas for five years, I think. Lived in Austin for seven. Lived in Boston for one. Lived in Kansas City for two. Uh, but I didn't, I hardly lived in Irving. They just didn't want to say Dallas because that, that big dude, uh, had just said that he had lived in Dallas on the 90 Day Fiance, so they wanted to say it was somewhere else. Even though it was Irving, they didn't want to say DFW. I'm not a Texas person, I'm not gonna lie, I don't like Texas. I've not wanted, I have disliked Texas since forever. I've always, always, always wanted to leave the country. <laughs> I've, never, I've never really wanted to be here. And... So... Is it tangle or tiny dot art? No. Is that where you just like do little dots? That could be kind of fun. I hope they're okay. It's a police officer, never mind. 
I am unfortunately in the United States. Would I live in a van again? Absolutely, I would live in a van again, yes. I would live in a van, specifically though, if I were in Europe. Uh, there's nothing like traveling in Europe via a van. Like, you just get to see Europe for what it actually is. Europe is incredible. Uh, with the right person, maybe, but like, honestly, I would just do it alone. Um, I don't really, a relationship I'm not really after anymore. Um, if it happens, cool, but I'm not. I'm not really, a <clears throat> seeking a relationship, love, like, I'm just trying to freaking work on myself, grow myself, get that money, get that bank, buy a couple of properties around the world. Um, yeah, I'm not, my goal is not a relationship anymore. Used to be, not, not even on the list anymore, not even on my top 10. I enjoy my own company too much, dude. Like, I actually, like, I love my own company. I'm good on my own. Like, it, relationships in my history have just not been, like, they just haven't really provided me anything. Do you know what I mean? Anything that I can't provide myself, like, everything I just do better alone. So, I don't know. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. What's my type? My type is a person who is cool with mental health, who is kind, compassionate, respectful, patient. Funny. Da 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 da. Harry Connick Jr. <laughs> I'm like a fun person. This is the thing that kind of sucks. Is I I'm not shown on the show as like a fun person, a funny person. Like I was the one making the crew crack up all the time. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm comedy, baby, do you know what I mean? I was a class clown growing up, like, and it sucks that that part of me wasn't shown. Like, the first season, I remember the first season when my, like, best friends, I have a best friend from childhood, a best friend from college, and a best, my current best friend. They all said the same thing. They were like, I watched it and I didn't know who that was. Like, who was that? You were playing a part, right? Yeah. Cause that, like, it wasn't me. There was no me there. Um, other than the awkward. I am a pretty awkward person, but like, yeah, I think the reunion showed the most of me for sure. Like, I'm a little snarky, sarcastic, saying the funny thing quietly person, like, but I'm also like the person dancing on a chair being like, come on, get with me, sing with me, let's go, baby. Putting on like shows for people. Like I try to make people laugh. I'm a, I'm a, that's like, that's what brings me joy is bringing people laughter, making people happy, bringing people like fun stuff. And so it sucks that I'm like this Debbie Downer, negative Nancy, like when in reality I'm not, like I'm really just not. If anyone was that, it was her, like, she always brought me down. She always brought the energy in the room down. Like she would walk on set and we'd all be laughing and then it would just be like quiet. Cause it's like, depending on her mood, like who knows what, like, is she gonna bully me? Is she gonna like say something mean? Is she gonna say something kind of funny that's not actually funny? Like it, what's gonna happen here? <laughs> so. Thank you. I appreciate those who saw me. I really do. It is so validating to be seen despite their every attempt at dimming my light. That's like my, that's been my favorite quote this year is like, 
You threw dirt on my name and flowers grew. That, that sums up this year for me. That sums up this season for me. You threw dirt on my name and flowers grew. And like that must really piss you off because you, you thought that like you were doing something and you didn't. And that's what people, are, that's why people are like, they're like confused, they're like blown away. They're like, I don't understand. Like, how is she still good? Like, babe, you don't even know the fucking half of it, man. <laughs> Thank you. I worked on that, uh, Molly. I really worked on that. I've done a lot of therapy. I've done a lot of research, learning how to communicate. I've done a lot of practicing, learning how to, like, communicating. That isn't something that, you know, I was taught in childhood. Um, I didn't have that kind of like healthy childhood, you know what I mean? So that's something that I had to learn later on in life and teach myself, put effort in. Uh, becoming a good communicator, saying my wants, my needs, saying the things that, you know, I need. But I've gotten a lot better at it this past year. And honestly, it's because of all the hate. It's because I've had to stand with my feet planted in the ground and said, actually, I'm not all those things you say. I'm who I am, and you can go left yourself. Thank you, appreciate that. Yeah. It's really crazy to me how people can't understand anxiety. Because there is a point when I didn't have anxiety. I straight up didn't, I had no anxiety. I was like Dempsey, not a single ounce of anxiety. Couldn't understand it, nothing. But I still had empathy for people who had anxiety. I still was there for my friend asking her what she needed when she had a panic attack. Do you know what I mean? I still cared. I put, put effort and empathy into it. I didn't develop anxiety until my roommate uh, decided to unalive herself. That is when I started having panic attacks. That is when I started having this overwhelming anxiety. So there for me, this always isn't, this al this isn't always the case. For me, it was very trauma. It was a moment when I developed anxiety. Um, so there's a before and an after for me. Uh, and so, but the before, I still was empathetic to people who had it, do you know what I mean? I was still kind. Um, and the fact that's, that people can't be, people choose not to be, is um, what I think the problem with the whole world is, man. <laughs> a lack of empathy, a lack of even willingness to try to understand, a lack of an open mind open emotions like I think that's the whole problem with everything so no I didn't get the money back from the van I I've put that in my like uh, things not to even like worry about or whatever um, all I really want is wishbone and Elroy back You think it could have been a culture thing with her? It's... It doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? That's not really an excuse in this day and age when there is so much access to information. Um, it's just not a... Uh, it's, it's not an excuse. I, I wasn't raised learning about anxiety. Do you know what I mean? I taught myself. Like... I went out of my way to learn. I asked my friends, hey, you're having a panic attack, what can I do? It's just, I don't know what that is. I don't, I don't even know if that can be taught, but it, and if, I don't think it's a culture thing. And if it, isn't, if it is a culture thing, that's wrong. What did that chick on Queer Ultimatum say? Cause she was like, well, I'm just a spy. I'm like, just spicy cause I'm Latina. And she was like, it's not an, ex your Ethnicity or whatever is not an excuse to be mean to people or something. You know what I'm talking about? That girl Tiff said it on Queer Ultimatum. She said it so perfectly. I literally stood up and was like, it's not an excuse. It's just not. Be a good person. Be who like you say you are. Make it line up. Otherwise, don't say it. The fact that Ray Charles and Nora Jones existed in the same timeline. Pretty freaking wild.
Yeah, I was very much the adult in the relationship. Um, that scene where she's like crying, she had many moments like that where she would just cry for just out of nowhere, no reason. She wouldn't be able to communicate what was going on. Um, didn't seem prompted by anything. I don't know what it was. Still to this day, I don't know what those issues were, but I would hold her. I would take care of her. I would. She has her own uh, stuffed elephant, which is made of, uh, it's very sentimental to her. I would treat her like a baby sometimes. She would act like a baby sometimes. And I know that some people's way they go back into their like childlike state. Um, I, you know, I have had past girlfriends that have acted like that. I don't judge. I was there for her, but it, yeah, it was oftentimes a uh, parent-child relationship where she would throw fits and cry and stuff like that. And I would just kind of pick up the pieces, not even really knowing what the pieces were. Dempsey never cheated with a producer. That's a rumor that's been going around. I never said that. I don't know where that rumor came from. It's not true. She never cheated on me with a producer. That never happened. Uh, trust me, I would love to say that, but it didn't happen. It's not the truth. Um, that's not, she never did that. Maybe it's cold outside. Yeah, I mean the whole, that whole scene with, with like the internet, trying to get the internet work, what you also didn't see, I don't think they showed it. Uh, she like broke the table. Um, and so I was working on like this tiny little slit of wood and I was like, hey, can you get some like wood glue uh, and like, can we fix this? And she was like, no, that's a project I'll do another day. I'm tired from driving. And I'm like, I'm tired too, man. Like, <laughs> what? Who broke up with who? You creeped on her Instagram and she claims it was her? No, and I have receipts to prove that if anyone is at all interested. Uh, no, it was very much mutual. Um, and I think it was basically because she knew that I was done because I was giving off, like I was just done. I stopped trying, I stopped. So there was a moment when she she stopped trying and it was when she found out that we were not gonna be on the last resort. She kind of just shut down. And it was like a little bit after that, that I just started realizing how mean she was to me. And I stopped being there for her. I stopped like, cause I would just, it was like I was in a, I was like, it was like I was, a, I was a punching bag, like an emotional punching bag that she would use. And I didn't let it get to me anymore. Like I just wouldn't let it get to me anymore. Do you know what I mean? I'd just be like, instead of being like, blah, 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 blah. I would just be like, okay. And just like, and so she, there was nothing. And so eventually I think it became very apparent to her that like we were done and like I was asking for a space. She was in the van and I was dog sitting. Um, I was pet sitting, uh, dogs, cats, anything to just like get away from her. Um, and then she would be like, I don't even know. But anyway, it got to the point where it was like, okay, I think we should talk and I don't think this relationship is healthy for us. And we both agreed. Like, so it was, it was very much a mutual thing. It was not her breaking up with me. Um, but we continued to live together. Uh, and then something happened and it just went to absolute SHIT. And I'm not gonna get into that yet. Uh, probably on the podcast in a future episode, but not not yet. Thank you. Appreciate that. 
I did not use my anxiety as an excuse to not regulate my emotions. That's a very interesting statement considering everything that I did beforehand and talked about and the needs that I say, said I needed met. Uh, that's very wild of a comment to say. Oh good, I'm so glad you're out. Bye. <sighs> the podcast is called The Tell All. People be wildin', man. Have y'all watched Slumdog Millionaire lately? I watched the dance scene recently, like the one at the end. And it was so good, it made me like want to watch it again. I know, Lindsay, it sucks. It really sucks. Being misunderstood sucks. It is one of the... It's a triggering thing because especially like if you're nervous by saying you, you have this thing called like justice sensitivity and you want to be understood like you have this deep desire to be understood and it's like the world just doesn't understand you period uh that's tough um i haven't finished this season of love is blind hey riley what's up i hate people that don't have or are not sympathetic to anxiety literally same i can't i don't there's no point in me even attempting to be friends with them. They're so close-minded. I don't really chill with close-minded people. Or people who don't have empathy for mental health. I just don't. What's up, Riley? How you doing? Hope you're good. Yeah. I don't know. Like, it's been a while since I've watched this new Love is Blind. I think it's been, like, two, a week or two since I've watched... So I don't even remember where I left off or the people's names. I know I don't like Hannah. <laughs> Hannah Loki reminded me a bit of Dempsey. And that scene in the kitchen was literally, was it, that scene in the kitchen with Nick and Hannah, I wanted to, I wanted to put that on. I wanted 90 day to see that because she did that to me all the time in my brain. This was something that like caused our relation. This is something that every single day I could never do anything quick enough. I could, and I was always stupid. She would call me stupid. There, I have video footage of her, of her calling me stupid um, because I was never quick enough with whatever she asked. But the, the way she would ask things was so like confusing and or it would be like five things at once. So she'd be like, and, and she wouldn't say it like loud either. She'd be like, go get, go get the black thing from the back and then go put the water hose and then go do this and that, and then go do this and move that. And I would just be like, like my brain would just be like, mm. but if I asked, if I asked, if I tried to clarify, she would, why don't you ever listen to me? So I would try to just do whatever, like I thought I heard and remembered and I would try to do it. And sh just, if I got it wrong and I always got it wrong, I always got it wrong. And it made me feel so stupid. It freaking, oh, it made me feel so stupid every time. She would just, ooh, she would just be like, you're stupid, you're dumb. Like, why can't you ever listen to what I'm saying? What is wrong with you? Blah, 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 blah. Every day, every single day, every day, it was like that. And it beat me down, man. It beat me down and it made me feel small. It made me feel stupid. It made me feel like my brain was slow. And like, like I couldn't ever do anything right or fast enough. And she would just always be like, I can do it. Why can't you like, it just, I remember that every single day because we always had chores in the van. Do you know what I mean? There was always emptying the toilet. There was adding water to the water tank, uh, doing the dishes. Uh, there was always stuff. If I did dishes, it was never right. I, I would use too much water. If I cleaned the bathroom, it was never right. I left out a spot. If I even took a shower, dude, if I took a shower, I, I didn't lean enough to where the water got on the door and now there's like potentially mold. Every single thing that I did, and it was never, it was never like it was my van. 
or our van. It was always like I was a guest in her van and I was always effing stuff up. Always. All the time. So, like, honestly, like, I loved van life, but I was relieved to get out of it with her because I was so stressed out all the time. I never did anything right. I never did anything right. I never did anything fast enough. And like, if I, if I tried to hurry and do something, I would like, if I, I had to carry a, a thing of water because the water tank didn't have enough water. So I'd carry water in a bowl, I would spill it. Oh no, now you spilled it. Now you have to use a towel and the towel that we have is clean and now it's dirty and ha just, ah, she would rage like that. It, it's just, that like, that brought me back, man. Ugh. So that was that was a daily thing. Being torn down like that was a daily thing. And I wish they had captured that because that was my reality every single day was being torn down piece by piece, bit by bit. And like, I just felt like I was stupid and slow and my brain wasn't fast enough. And in reality, I'm a decently smart person, man. But it was exactly like that. It was exactly like that kitchen scene with Hannah where his brain is just like malfunctioning and he can't do anything right. And he's asking stupid questions because she's just like, you're an idiot. I made you this way. Like, holy sh it's a lot, man. It's a lot. She talked at me, not to me, yeah. And she always felt that she was like better than me, smarter than me, everything, more fun than me. And she would say all this, I'm more fun than you, blah, blah, blah. And like, she wasn't. Ew, as someone who is also neurodivergent, you make us look bad and you can leave. Wow, that's pretty rough. Yeah, she did say she was smarter than me. She would say I'm stupid. She would say I'm dumb. Like I have that on video of her like telling me I'm stupid and dumb. And I would just, I wouldn't fight back because whatever I said would be ignored. She would straight out stonewall me most of the time, or she would turn it back to something that like I had done some time ago or whatever, I don't know. And if you could be in my body, you would understand. Yeah. Yeah. Except I think she would not, she probably would have understood, but she would have never said that she understood. Do you know what I mean? Cause that would mean her admitting that I was right about something and she would not ever want to do that. Do you know what I mean? Her ego was too big. Yeah, 100% has something to do with the fact that she's a traveler. Everyone in England, everyone in the UK knows that travelers are people who will take your things, will F you over. And that's one of the things like I encountered when living in the van is that we had a guy come out. We had a guy come out and, you know, try to, we called companies, this is what happened. So our water heater was broken and we had to call around and ask people to put one in. And they would be like, okay, yeah, what's your address? And we would tell them where we were. We were on the fairgrounds because she was working at the carnival. And uh, when they heard that it was on the fairgrounds, they would say, are you a traveler? And she would say, yeah. And they would say, sorry, we're not coming out. We're not gonna help you. And I, in that moment, I was like, why won't these people help? Like, that's crazy. Like, why are these people being so mean? And she's like, people hate us, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, why? And they're like, she would just be like, I don't know, I don't know. Because the travelers rob these people. They will have electricians come out. They will have water heater people come out and they will rob them. So no, they don't wanna come out and work with them. Like, they don't want any part of that. I don't blame them, man. <laughs> it's a whole community. Do you know that they, uh, travelers are considered a race? 
They're considered their own ethnic group um, in England. That's been like something that they recently had. So that means like apparently that they don't have to follow the laws and they're exempt from following like the laws and stuff. So they just don't like, if I were to sue her, she wouldn't give a rat's butt because they don't follow the laws. Do you know what I mean? Like they don't, if the police told them to do something, they would tell them to go fuck themselves. Like they don't care. Like, yes, they could get still, still put in jail, but like they're just, they don't, they're lawless. They're lawless people. They have their own way of dealing with things. Um, like this, uh, this, this one story she told me, someone from a different clan or whatever, not clan, but like a different group of travelers, uh, put a hole in her family's tires or something. So her family put bleach in their food. Um, and I'm just like listening to this, like. Sorry, what, you nearly killed someone? Like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what? No, I didn't get the money back from the van. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing that like, I didn't realize. Um, they sound like mob. Yeah, then they, they work kind of like similarly to mob families. But uh, the producer was always like, are you sure you're okay with her being a traveler? And I was like, I didn't know anything about it. So I'm like, yeah, of course, like, but why wouldn't I be? And she's like, are you sure? Do you know what they're... And I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, I, why are you being this way? Like, ew. Now I get it. <laughs> now I freaking get it. You like this song? Take my whole life to me. I love this song, but I'm not gonna lie. I don't like Harry singing it. I like uh, Frank singing it more. Yeah, back in the States currently. No, so there are Irish travelers and then there's uh, British travelers. There's different kinds of travelers and the Irish travelers and the British travelers hate each other. Hate, 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 hate each other. And then there's the, there, there's the gypsies who they consider differently and the gypsies and travelers hate one another because the gypsies don't work. They just steal, but the travelers run the carnivals and stuff like that, so they think they're better than them. Um, yeah. There is English travelers. There is English travelers. I don't know what. L, I've literally lived in it, darling. I've literally lived in these trailer, like in the in their yards. I've literally lived in it, babes. Literally, you don't know what you're talking about, my love, my dearest. I'm so sorry, but you actually don't know what you're talking about. I don't care if you're from England, if you've never been a part of the community, if you've never dated someone in the community, you don't know shit. Sorry, you just don't. I worked for them. So like all freaking Christmas at the winter markets, I was working. I was, I was, helping her get money working at the candy stand i have video footage of that i have pictures of that i froze my butt off in london working uh, at the friggin candy stand i met a couple of fans took pictures with them at the candy stand i worked for these people morning till night man and they don't they pay in cash because it's all a little shady and they don't pay taxes, which, you know, honestly, I'm not a fan, I'm not against because F the government, but. <sighs> no, I don't know if she's gonna give my belongings back. She's been, she she's blocked me on everything. I have no way of contacting her. Um, just acting like a great human being. Anyway, are there any other questions that anyone has about anything else, maybe? 
Because I know people get so exhausted of hearing that. Will there be a tell-off for the other way? Yes, and everyone except me and MC will be on it. The podcast is not out yet. You will be able to listen to it soon, however. It's still being edited. How long were we together? Two years. I don't really care, L. I I mean, the stereotype sometimes is right, babes. Blame her for keeping this stereotype alive. Don't blame me for telling it like it is. No, my mind has not changed on wanting kids. No, I'm not nerving. I work in finance, but my company is not hiring. I already tried to get someone hired and that was a big fail, unfortunately. So, they're not hiring at this time. <clears throat> yes, I will be voting for Harris. Cue a ton of people telling me to F off, slash removing me as a follower. It's cool, bro. I'm not a feminist at the end of the day. And I believe in women's rights to their own bodies. And if you don't, get the hell out! Get! Get now! Get! What was my favorite part about Europe? The views, bro. The views. I mean, these are the best views you've ever seen. You see mountains, you see the clearest, most beautiful lakes you've ever seen in your life. Do you know what I mean? Oh my God, like the nature. Like you're going hiking, all uh, beautiful hiking places. But the hiking is like kid friendly. How is the hiking kid friendly? They have like little, uh, like little hunts that the kids can do along the way. They have like little fairy houses hidden in the trees that the kids have to find and collect. Um, they have these little characters that are made out of wood uh, that are just randomly in places the kids have to go up and like touch or like do a little dance in front of or like sing a song in front of like it's very kid friendly um, the hunts which or the hikes which I thought was super cool um, yeah there's so many fairy houses uh, I'm thinking specifically of this hike in Andor I think um, it's just nature. It's like, it's just nature. The nature in Europe is incredible. Uh, I just love, I love Europe. I'm meant to be in Europe. I want to end up in Europe. I don't want to really end up anywhere but Europe. Europe is calling my name. I, I long to be in Europe. If I were, could be anywhere right now, I'd be in Europe. Oof, I love Europe. Unfortunately, as an American, you can only stay there for like three months at a time. Uh, so it would be pretty difficult for me to do without the van or without like living in my car. Cause you have to go to uh, Schengen zones, which are countries outside of the EU, I guess. Um, and spend some time there before you go back for another three months in, in Europe. You're emotionally living in Europe, me too, Rosie. Literally same. I wanna live in Europe so bad. I'm just dying to live. What part of Europe would I live in? Austria. Austria. Yeah. I've never been to Sweden though, and I feel like Sweden would be cool as well as Switzerland. Um, I would come to Norway in a heartbeat. If anyone wants to <laughs> marry me only for visa purposes, <laughs> uh, I would do it straight up. Just get me there, man.
Uh, I'm not like a huge fan of the UK. Like it's great to visit, but it's just so dang gloomy and like rainy and cloudy and dark and cold. It, I feel like at least in Europe, there's a little more sun. <coughs> you thought the marker was a dog panting? <laughs> uh. Wow, I've made you question your straightness. That's really something. Thank you. I appreciate that. Netherlands, Austria, Switzerland, Zurich. Ooh, yeah. I, I, I enjoyed the Netherlands quite a bit as well, to be fair. I've been to Seattle. I didn't... I feel like Seattle wasn't really European at all. So, but I might just be uh I, I, I'm spending more time in Canada because it's the closest to Europe that I can get while still being stateside so that I can still work on the podcast. Um, but yeah, I'm just like every two seconds just like get me out of effing America. <laughs> I'll marry someone for one of those four countries for citizenship. Literally same, Lori. Literally same. If anyone, I would literally pay. <laughs> like, I would pay. So if there are any Europeans here, hello. <laughs> What's up? Me and Lori are available, potentially. <laughs> For our own quality of life, please <laughs> consider. <laughs> Laura, you're a character, man. <laughs> Ooh, you ha you will have your dual Italian citizenship? Freaking lucky, man. You're traveling to Austin, that's nice. Um, I'm not in Austin. Uh, however, Devin from 90 Day is in Austin. And so is Sophie, pretty sure. Van not required. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, but Europe. That's why I'm like, let me make enough money so that I can buy my way into Europe. Because I think if you like have a certain amount of money or whatever, you, like you can buy citizenship or something. Sophie and I have met. She's great. She's fantastic. We are not at all attracted to one another, though, in that way. <laughs> that will never happen. She's fantastic, though. She is so sweet and so nice. Like, she showed us the nightlife of Austin. She is such, just like the sweetest person ever. She's such a sweet human being. Like, so sweet. Um, I feel bad for how she was portrayed as well. Yeah, Ruby, of course you can see. This is what we have so far. If y'all would like to shout out the next color, I'm open to it. First one to see a color wins. Oh, I gotta show the colors. Oh, well, people already saw the color, okay. Purple, purple, purple's a good one. I love it, cool. Unfortunately, we don't have teal. We're just kind of working with the basics here. This is out of my niece's coloring box. You seem happy. Who is she? She's me. She's me. I have rediscovered my self. My love for myself. She's me. <laughs> There's a line from this song by Taylor Bono, and she's like, I don't remember what it is, but it's like, I don't remember. Dang, I lost it. Basically something along the lines of like, I can't remember now at all. It's completely evaded me. Apologies. It was good. It was so, it was, yeah, it was self-love for sure. I don't remember what it was though exactly anymore. 
completely gone. Hi, Norway. One of my favorite people in the world is from Norway. And she's having back surgery tomorrow. So, keeping her in my thoughts. Did you watch The Substance? Yeah, dude, that was freaking rough. They should have stopped that movie like 30 minutes before it ended. <laughs> it was good for a little bit and then it just got like weird. And not like weird in a cool way, like weird in a like, ooh. Like, did we really need to see all of that stuff? Then it just turned into like a horror comedy. Like that movie, Z uh, Zombievers where it's like the zombies that are beavers. It is so bad, but it's like a cult favorite because it's just so bad. You know, those movies are just so bad that you're just like, ooh, mmm, I don't know about that. Like it was so good up until it just wasn't. Like it was making such a great statement about age and being a woman and then it just, you saw it. <laughs> uh. Lindsay, you're doing the same thing. That that's awesome. That's Texas for you. Got someone in like a massive friggin' truck up to here that he has to probably use a ladder to climb in blasting music. Which major Texas city is the best in your opinion? Uh, Austin, but Austin is going down the drain. Prices are in increasing and um, it's just not what it used to be. So if you have to live in Texas, I would say Austin or San Marcos, but if you can live somewhere else, don't live in Texas. <laughs> I'm in Texas right now. I'm looking at uh, apartments though, so I can have a home base. For legal purposes, I can't say where, unfortunately, because... Because... <laughs> but... I'm hopefully looking forward to moving soon. And having my own place. This will be the first time I will have ever lived alone. So that's exciting. I've always had a roommate, so. At 34, it'll probably be like 35, and it'll be the first time I've ever lived alone. So I'm very excited for that, because I've never done it. Hey, Will! How are you? What are you eating tonight? What did you eat tonight? What did you, did you cook? Yeah, I feel like living alone would be fantastic. And I would love to I would love to foster cats, to be fair. I would love to foster. I think fostering would be good for me. <laughs> Happy to be weird. And I'm glad that you're a fellow weirdo as well. Do you live alone, Will? Will is one of my favorite vegan creators. He is from the UK. And he does a great job representing not only his culture, but also men in veganism, which is just something that honestly doesn't get talked about enough, I feel. Because meat is so much associated with masculinity and he does a great job of kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not educating, it's like, you know that word that means like that? He does a great job of that. For Veganuary, I will be doing another full month of just stor my stories, just chock full of vegan uh, chefs and their recipes. Looking forward to that. Breaking down the stereotypes. Yes. Normalizing. Yes. Yes. All of the above. Thank you. <clears throat> You're good alone and you love animals. Yeah, I think that's, I think this might be the way. Oh, well, I think Texas will probably be better than Southern California, so at least I hope. <laughs> My birthday is January 17th. 
I share the same birthday as Michelle Obama, Jim Carrey, Al Capone, uh, Betty White, who else? That's all I can think of. So some interesting people. <laughs> Got like a mafia dude, a comedian, uh, a former president's wife, <laughs> and Betty White. Yeah, if anyone knows anything about astrology, I have quite the, um, I have, if you like people who look at my, people who are astrologers who look at my chart or like you're something, you're, something is going to happen and like you're destined for something big. I'm not sure what it is, but you're destined for something big. I have six placements in Capricorn and all three of my top three signs are cardinal signs. If you know anything about Capricorn. I've been through the ringer, <laughs> um, but if you serve, if 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 you have come to this point and effing survived that BS, man, six placements in Capricorn, my top three being cardinal signs, you're you're destined for something good. That's why I'm hanging on the freaking thread, but I'm hanging. Hello, Norway. Why are there so many Norwegians here that are not uh, asleep? Isn't it bedtime, you guys? On a Monday night, too. You waiting for the plug adapter was wild to see someone else taking advantage of the situation. Yeah, so like, I told her everything that I needed to for work. And she said that she had bought everything. Like I gave her the money. I don't even know what she used the money on. Now that I think about it, it's the first time I'm thinking about that. <laughs> um, I gave her the money to buy like everything I needed for work and the adapter wasn't there. So I was kind of like, this was on my list. Why isn't it here? Uh, We have the same birthday? That's crazy. Serena. Well, happy future birthday soon. What, what, how old are you gonna turn? You're married to a Capricorn, how's that? <laughs> I feel like it would probably be a little tough sometimes, but we are also the most loyal, giving people. Um, but we can come across as cold sometimes, but we can also be total hams. Um, but our moods can also kind of flip pretty quickly. We have Cassandra in the house, what's up? <laughs> You're probably like, oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's tough, but she's, is, loves me. That's good, yeah. Capricorns, we do love hard. People think you're cold, yeah. Ariana, what are you doing? <laughs> and our partners never have to plan anything again. And Caps get that shit down. Yeah, Pamela, that's so true. We we are fantastic planners. That is like one. That is the one thing I've always because I've always wanted to like propose to somebody that like because it would be so over the top and like so effing perfect. Like in my mind. Of course we would go with the scavenger hunt, but it would be like kind of like a a walk down memory lane, like the first place we've been, our favorite places along the way. And then it would end with this like gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous scene or something like out of a movie. Do you know what I mean? Like we're all about bada boom, bada bing. Like we are freaking, we're old souls I feel. Your ex-husband is a Capricorn, but I also love girls now. <laughs> yeah, male Capricorns are very different from female Capricorns. Um, I had like a f uh, old friend who is a male Capricorn and... Oof, him and the ladies, there was always something going on. <laughs> like, bro, chill. Dempsey's just posted about me in her story. Oh boy, what'd she say? 
dying to hear hear this. This will be the first time she's said anything, so I'm curious to see if she will be saying the truth or if she's just going to... Uh, she said you bullied her. I bullied her! Wow. Okay, interesting. Um, and are there receipts? Any video footage or... Anything? Out of curiosity? Because I'm pretty sure I can pull some stuff up if, if we want to discuss bullying. Oh, so she talked about it. She's like talking about it on video. Interesting. Dubs can get bent, truly. <laughs> Listen, she never has to hear from me again. All she has to do, do is return my things, specifically Wishbone and, uh, and Elroy, and I will never speak about her again. Never. I will finally be washed of her, but she keeps my belongings around because she can still control me in a way and still have manipulation and still have me having to think about this. She wants that. She, she wants that. So. I know she doesn't want me. I don't want her, dude. What I'm saying is she, she, ew, she's probably trashed it, I would. You can get blocked. I, listen, here's the thing. She's put about Elroy and the other one from August. Giving her update on a current relationship, that's crazy. Wow. All I want, all I want. By the way, the new girl like sort of kind of looks like she could be a relative of me. Before me, she was dating blondes. Um, so clearly she's now changed her type to people that look like me, unfortunately. She'll never get someone who truly looks like me. Sorry, babes. Best of luck. Never gonna get this again. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, the person before her was blonde, uh, very different than the person she's dating now. Um, literally, I, all I want is my childhood teddy bears back. And the fact that she will not give them back is so not cool. Like, that's all I'm asking for back. That's literally it. That's all I'm asking for back. Yeah, she did move on already, which is hilarious because like w when we were part, one of the things we said when we, when, one of the things she said when we broke up is she was like, you're just going to go on single life and you're just going to get into a relationship. You're going to be in a relationship like right away because you're just a whore. Um, and I'm not. Seems like she was just holding a mirror up and... Best of luck to her. Best of luck to her. She said she would give them back in August and screenshot your text and it is now nearly in November. Yeah. She said she would give them back in August. Yeah, I mean, she did, she did tell me that she would give them back and she hasn't given them back. They're not, they're not with me. That's, that's like actually, so she, I'm confused. So her proof is her promising to give me back my teddy bears, but then she never gave them back. So where is the proof in that? Like what, how is that? Is she just saying that she's a shitty, is she just like reaffirming that she's a shitty person and she didn't like give me my stuff back? Like I'm confused how that makes her look good. You didn't give your abuser stuff back either. Well, I never abused her, so. <clears throat> Actively working and traveling. She adds to her being bullied. Yeah, using the money 
from this show. She's bitching that people are mad at her and claiming she's been bullied. This is crazy, dude. This is actually insane. May karma give her exactly what she gave to me. May karma give her everything that she gave to me. May karma, please. Her excuse for not returning the bears is she is not home yet. What? Where are they? Where, like... You are the only reason people even talk about her. Without her, she is still using you, yeah. She needs the clout to fund her because nobody else will. <laughs> yeah, let's hope this new girl doesn't get used. Honestly, that was the most triggering part for me is like seeing that she's setting herself up to do this to somebody else because it felt like seeing that it felt like it felt like watching myself about to go through it again and i wanted to take this girl and just be like please don't fall for this don't fall for her bs like it's like talking to myself from two years ago and being like, babes, I know you think you like her, but she's not a great human. Get out, run. But you can't, and this is one of the things that like my best friend said, she said, just like her ex couldn't save you, you cannot save this girl. Like you cannot, she, this has, she, Dempsey has been brought in her life for whatever reason. She has to learn this lesson by herself. You cannot save her from this as badly as you want to, as much as it sucks, as much as you, as you want to just like not, as much as you see that this is a car crash about to happen, this car crash is meant to happen for this girl. Whatever it is, like whatever life lesson she's going to get out of this or Dempsey is going to get out of this or followers who watch this train wreck are going to get out of this, like it's meant to happen. Like it's, it's going to be, that way. Um, I don't think she's after a green card. I don't think that would be something that she's after. I don't think she like wants to live in America. She like hates America. So I don't think she's after a green card. Things that she is after though are money and fame. Uh, she, has, you know, has said multiple times she wants to continue on with 90 Day. I didn't even want to do season two. Um, we had massive fights about that she had to really talk me into doing season two so and i'm sure 90 day would jump at the chance to continue uh filming with her so this song is called i'll be seeing you by billy holiday legend um but i don't think she's after a green card i don't think she's one of those people i think she will use this girl for money and fame <clears throat> so that and that's why i think she she's probably going to be on the show again um but i don't think it will be for anything other than that it's for her money 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 she'll do anything for money quick buck she'll do anything for money the highest bidder i'll take money from you um i don't know if you guys have noticed I don't like sell myself out. So recently I've had people come to me. I've had like sex toy people come to me and be like, hey, we'll give you this product for free if you'll like try to sell it to your followers. And I'm like, I don't use toys, so no. Um, hair products places have been like, I'll give you stuff for free if you'll, and I'll pay you like 500 bucks if you'll do that. And I'm like, I don't use that product, so no. I don't, I'm not, I don't care. Do you know what I mean? However, if Smuckers and Crustables wants to sponsor me, I'm down for that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, for me, it's more like principle and like, I'm not gonna just try to sell things to people. However, Dempsey will. Um, Dempsey tries to sell face products, jewelry, and she'll literally like, I've watched her. She's filmed it in the van. Uh, these products that she'll get and try to sell you guys and it's just, she'll, afterwards, she's just like, this is shit. I would never do that. I'm never gonna do that to you guys. I don't care how much money, I don't care if I don't have any money, I'm not willing to do that. 
Um, so, two different types of people, my, my man. Two different types of people. Hey, I'm glad that she's speaking up. I'm really glad that she's speaking up. This is the first time that we've heard of heard from her. Um, not her saying I was racist to her family. Let's just take a minute to, let's just take a minute to, let's just take a minute with that. So I'm not sure if you guys know my ethnicity but I'm not white. Um, she is. <laughs> wow. Do like, should I, do we even want to go there? Shall I bring like a uh, college professor in to give you guys the definition of what racism is? Shall we do that? Shall we plead? Like, let's dissect that. If you want to talk about racism, go to her father's Facebook page. His name is, God, I forgot his name. There's threads of it on Reddit. He is not only transphobic, homophobic, but he is also severely racist towards Middle Eastern people specifically. He was also racist towards me. Um, Richard, thank you. Richard Wilkinson. You can look him up on Facebook. All of his stuff, uh, transphobic, homophobic, uh, severely racist stuff. I'm talking a Middle Eastern person, R-P-I-N, a cartoon of a Middle Eastern person, R-P-I-N-G, this white girl, like, in just being like, get out of our country. Uh, so if you want to talk about racism, we really shouldn't go there. But if you'd like to look at all of that, uh, Facebook is available. It is a free website. And it uh, doesn't delete. Um, you can also go on Reddit and see multiple threads about that. That is part of the reason why, even though we filmed with him on this season, you do not see him on this season because it was brought to the show's attention that he was all of these things. Um, shall I go into our, oh, I could go there. I could go there. If you want to talk racism, I could really bring in some receipts from her, but I don't think we want to go there. I'm not trying to go there. I don't even want to go there. I don't want to ruin her effing reputation, bro. I want my wishbone and Elroy back. I want wishbone and Elroy back there. I, I would, I want to be, cremated with them. This is how much I love them. Whew. Anyway, <clears throat> I need to calm down. Get myself too riled up. Ugh. It's hot. It's 444. 444. What does 444 mean? 444. What does it mean? 444. There's a rhyme for it. I think. I've forgotten. I'm gonna have to like look it up again. 444 four, four means something. Does anyone know what 444 four, four means? No, it's not a make a wish. It's like, I think 222 two, two is like a relationship is incoming. 444 four, four is you're exactly where you're supposed to be. 444 four, four means tell us what's happened to the van. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yes, my anxiety has improved since it's been back. Protection, angel numbers, okay. Exactly where you're supposed to be, dope. Cool, I'm right on track, sweet, thank you. Um, 20 minutes past 420, hey Sarah. <laughs> um, cool, so my angels are with us, that's dope. Or your angels are with us, I don't know. Um, that's neat, neat, Stephanie. I have no idea what I was saying. I feel like I was on a rant and then I've completely forgotten it. Not a single clue. What's up, Arkansas? Just kidding, I know it's pronounced Arkansas. Uh, my teeth, I brush them, I floss, I, uh... She screenshot, yeah, okay, we've talked about that already. Clarity, evolution, and stability, love that. Squirrel. You guys, did you guys see 
feeding the pigeons by hand if okay so if you ever get a chance highly recommend pigeon feeding very fun um take some bird seed out and you can you can hold it in your hand and they'll come up to you eventually then they'll start like crawling on not crawling but like hopping on your like head and like your shoulders and like they're just so cute um big fan of pigeons if you're ever looking for a good time Feed some pigeons. <sighs> yes, I did keep my job. 444 also means that you're about to be completing a goal. Nice. That's awesome. I I'm my 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 new goal is to heal. To heal and to not have the same patterns that I've had I'm focusing on just like better ways of what's the word not coping better ways of I've forgotten the word I feel like it begins with an O you don't know why this song makes you sad well it's a very sad song I'm too The mom from Schitt's Creek. Fan effing tastic movie. The scene, there's a scene in there that Jack Black does, and it's like before he's like even become Jack Black. Like this is like honestly before he's fantastic. Oh my god, it is I was like howling. Dang Serena, we're both adopted, both Capricorns and the same birthday. Pleasure to meet you there. Put it there! I know, Tear Noodle. It really is. <laughs> At this point, I'm not even having to do the work. The work is doing itself. Thank you, Karma. What does my tattoo mean? Which one? I have a couple. Talking about defamation and online bullying. Babes, if you want to talk about online bullying, let's rewind to last year during the first season when I would literally cry because of how much I was being bullied for this character that I played so that she wouldn't have to look bad. And how she told me to get over it. She told me you wanted to do that. Get over it. As I was being decimated, as I was being bullied to the core, go look on Reddit last year. I was being destroyed. I was getting death threats, bro. If you want to talk about bullying, this isn't bullying. People asking you to give me my childhood stuffed animals back is not bullying, babe. And if you think that's bullying, you are the most privileged person in your effing life. You are the most privileged person if you think that's what racism and bullying is. You have no idea. Blessed be. This is a tune as well. Although I just don't like Harry. Like, he doesn't do a good job of these songs. Like, I can never... This song. So I've been alone too long. Somebody we found someone. There's no one at all. And baby, all these nights I've struggled and found my pride. Scared that some. Nope, that one was too far. Kirby, bro. If you if you listen to that, easy to get to. Whoa! Ah! Sis. Ooh. Oh, I love a good singer. 
I didn't leave them with her, Jenny. I had no idea she would take off with the van. We went to another country together. I packed a suitcase because I thought I was coming back to it. Instead, she left me in that country alone uh, and went back by herself and took off with the van. So I didn't know I was leaving them. If I had known that, I, if I had known I was never going to see the van again, I would have said goodbye to the van and I would have packed them and all of my belongings into a suitcase. So I, I didn't know. I had no idea I was never going to. She did exactly what I was afraid of. Yeah, and that's called intuition, babe. And that is, you should, you should be connected with yourself enough to trust your intuition. And that is a lesson I've had to learn. That is something, that is a hard lesson, but it's something that I've learned over this past year is to trust my intuition. Expensive lesson, yeah. Most of my lessons to be fair are quite expensive. <laughs> uh, I'm a sucker for learning the hard way. Finally learned that at 47. Props to you, bud. Do you think your anxiety was actually intuition? Lindsay with the freaking Lindsay! Lindsay, make a TikTok about that, please. Make that into like a shirt or something. We need that. Like, you should make a TikTok that's like, maybe your anxiety is actually just your intuition. Like, just say that, make, like, let's make it go viral. Dude, that! Wow. Because here's the thing, my anxiety basically cleared up when I was no longer around her. Like, I still have it sometimes, but not every day. I was having panic attacks every single day. Lindsay with the freaking facts over here. Lindsay, we love you and your wisdom. You're killing it. Wow. So trust your anxiety, trust your intuition. Wow. Thank you for bringing that lesson into our lives. I feel like not only me, but other people needed to hear that, especially me, but like, I feel like that was really helpful. That was, that was, that was great. Thank you. I'm shook, literally, seriously, that's, wow. Intuition made you keep your car. Yeah, to be fair, the plan was never to sell my car. That was uh, a produced scene. Man, I'm gonna think about that all night. Have you guys been having like super vivid dreams? I've been like having vivid dreams to the point where I like wake up and like have like this in Earth Girls are easy for me. Gina Davis is pretty hot. She works as a general manager at the airport and leaves home a lot, and we just weren't working out. Oh, gosh, yeah. That's tough. If she's never there. I'm coloring this. Okay, but Dempsey told me she would give me back the bears two months ago, August. Whenever August was, uh, and she never did, so. I'll believe it when I see it. No, definitely not with Dempsey. No, definitely not with Dempsey. Never again. Favorite part of van life is when the moment when you wake up you slide the you slide the door open and you're in front of like a beautiful scene like a mountain with a lake under it and you're just like ah oh, this is the life and then you go put your set your little table up and your chair up and you just have breakfast a hot breakfast with this gorgeous view that's the best part of van life sometimes your view can be the ocean like the Croatian sea. Um, sometimes it can be mountains, sometimes it can be woods, like it changes, it can change every day. You open the door and it's just like, whoosh, beautiful. Uh, one of my favorite parts was, I'm a little, I don't even care, you know what I mean? Like I'm very like, let's do stuff. 
fun, fun, fun. I don't know. Uh, believe it or not. And so this one time we were, we were at this place. I don't know where we were. I don't remember what country we were in, but we were like in this basin. And then like up above were like, it was like a highway kind of thing. It was two lanes, but it was still like, but like the cars couldn't really see us from down. So I was, I took off all of my clothes and ran to this, uh, it was like a dock going onto this lake. And I s just stripped all my clothes off as I'm running and just, uh, what's it called? I skinny dipped and it was such a freeing feeling skinny dipping in this like lake in somewhere in Europe with the van right there. And I'll never, that was, that's like a core memory for me. Um, yeah. And I think I actually have a video of it, but obviously I'm not going to release that. <laughs> but that was, that was a core memory, man. That was, because I have gone like skinny dipping before with like friends and stuff, but it was always like at night in the dark. And this was like in broad daylight, like in the middle of the day, people could have easily like seen from above. People could have come down at any time. Like there were roads and I just, I was just, that's made all of this worth it. Like the, the people reaching out and telling me how it's impacted them in their lives, in their relationships. Like that's freaking awesome, man. It's hard to explain in your own words. That's fantastic. That's, I'm so glad it helped. Um, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that that moment has impacted people and made a difference in people's lives. It really makes me glad. I didn't want to do a second season. I had no desire to do a second season. I. Every single day of filming, I pushed back. I was, I was not fun to film with the second season. I was a freaking joy to film with the first season. Second season, I wasn't about it. Uh, I resisted every step of the way for the second season. So hearing that like is awesome because it just, it makes it worth it. Thank you. And honestly, I really am glad that I have done the second season because otherwise I would have just been left with everyone f thinking that I'm the character from the first season. <clears throat> Being cornered but in your mental, yeah. That's a good way to put it. Ooh, here we go, Diana. Let me see, I like how like deep her voice gets because the same. <laughs> Do you get paid a lot to do the seasons? No. Honestly, the first season, I swear to God, like if we added up the hours, it's below minimum wage. In other words, darling, it's me. Da da da. Fill my, Fill my heart with song and let me sing for. Dang, I, whoops, I wasn't supposed to do that. I need to get going though. Sammy Davis Jr. Woo! I need to get going. I've got to do the block walking. Please remember to get out and vote, folks. Very important in this election. Please do it. Early voting is happening right now. Um, please do it. Anyway, I'm off to go put out this literature on doors, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!